What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Going to do another episode of The Return Of. Now, I do understand that certain people don't always agree with the cards that I select for this segment, but I can't let that deter me from doing a series that other people flat out love. Now, you guys should pretty much know by now, if you've been watching this channel for a decent amount of time, Capital G is an extremist. I like things either extremely cold or extremely hot and nowhere in between. So, the card that I want to talk about today is Lone Fire Blossom and moving it from limited status all the way back to unlimited status. Capital G, you're crazy. Lone Fire Blossom is broken. Y'all probably would have agreed with you about two years ago. You know, I, I look at a bunch of different factors. You know, I'll give you this straight off the top. Lone Fire Blossom is one of those cards that will ref it will restrict future card design. It's much like Rescue Cat where, you know, when the card was released, if you kind of looked at it enough, you could pretty much realize it was only a matter of time before Konami mistakenly released the card and then it was like oh crap we forgot that rescue cat was a card i mean you looked at like just the most random things like test tiger and then they ended up making sam knight and it was like oops we forgot that rescue cat existed so you know just give it long enough and the card was going to be broken but when you look at lone fire blossom there are some major factors that make me think that the card is not nearly as potent and dangerous for the format and the health of the game as it was before number one the main application of Lone Fire Blossom, Synchro Summoning, or we could just go ahead and say Synchro Spam, Synchro Shokin, whatever you want to say. You know, you look at that and you think about, you know, the biggest and best Synchros that this card can commonly make. And, you know, Brio is banned, Trishula is banned, Formula Synchron is limited. So, I mean, your Synchro Spam isn't going to be nearly as powerful as it was before you know you even look at the fodder that went along with the synchro spam cards like reborn tengu which basically the cards falling off the ends of the earth i mean if you had a reborn tengu plus a lone fire blossom i mean that was better than friday night sex i mean are you kidding uh, you also look at the fact that you know you look at just the targets that lone fire blossom has in its arsenal granted there are tons of them but how many really good ones are there out there with glam with glow up bulbs still currently banned I mean, you're pretty much left with Dandelion, uh, Sport, and Titanium, a card that's amazing if you want to summon it straight from the deck. But if you ever draw it, oh my goodness, things are gonna get rough. So you know, I look at I look at the applications of what can you summon, and it's like I've got two legitimate targets. That's pretty much it. I mean, uh, are you gonna base a deck around that? Are you gonna try and play old school Plant Synchro? I mean, I, I understand you know that. If you have a Lone Fire Blossom plus a way of resummoning it during the same turn, like a Call of the Haunted or a Monster Born, it ends up making, you know, a two-card Shooting Star Dragon, which is fine and dandy. I don't think you lose advantage because of, like, making Formula Synchron somewhere in there. But, I mean, if that's the light at the end of the tunnel, if that's the absolute epitome of what you can do, I'm perfectly fine with that. And the reason I say that is because I've never thought that Shooting Star Dragon is an unbalanced card. I mean, it's very powerful, but it's... It's relatively difficult to summon outside of, you know, a double Lone Fire Blossom. But, I mean, does it still die to Evac Device and D Prison? Yeah. And do you get anything out of it? No. And is it a guaranteed plus one on summon or, you know, a card that almost always pays for itself? No. Then I'm pretty much fine with it. You know, I look at Lone Fire Blossom and I just think, you know, I think that if the card was at three, it wouldn't nearly be as potent because... The plays that you guys were accustomed to with Tengu's and stuff, they're either extremely limited now or they're just not flat out consistent enough to keep up with everything in this format. And that's not to say, you know, a broken play isn't broken just because it's not broken in a certain format. Again, if the best you can do is Shooting Star Dragon and that takes you, uh, chances are using limited cards, then I'm pretty much okay with that. You know, so let me know what you guys think. I think my opinion would be different. If, you know, if you could take Lone Fire and you could make, like, a Quasar or something, then I'd be a little different. I'd be, you know, a little indifferent if you had, like, Lone Fire plus Monster Born and somehow you could make a Quasar. But, you know, just having a Shooting Star Dragon, I'm fine with that. So let me know what you guys think about this, and I'll talk to you later. Oh, and because of measures out of my control that require me to take trips to Atlanta, Orlando, Nashville, and Baltimore, I'm bringing back the whole click and ad campaign. Yeah, those are not for leisure. They're strictly for business. Job interviews, guys. So uh, click an ad, and thank you very much.